Washington, this is VOA News. A timetable is set for new Egyptian elections, a key piece in the San Francisco plane crash found. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. Egypt's interim president set a timetable for the country to hold parliamentary elections early next year, followed by a presidential ballot. In a decree issued Monday, Adli Mansour said a referendum place within five months to ratify amendments to the country's constitution. After that, parliamentary elections will happen within two months and a date for a presidential vote will be announced once the new chamber convenes. It was last week that Egypt's army suspended the Islamist drafted constitution with the overthrow of President Mohamed Morsi following massive protests against his rule. Meanwhile, Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood is calling for more protests today after 51 people died and hundreds were wounded in Cairo Monday during clashes between the military and supporters of Mr. Morsi. Military officials say one soldier was among the dead and several more are in critical condition. Edward Uranian reports. Witnesses say the shootings began just before the end of dawn prayers Monday. The Muslim Brotherhood demonstrators and the Egyptian army each accused the other side of starting the violence. Al Jazeera television showed amateur video of a half dozen people it said were peaceful protesters shot by the army. Egyptian state TV also showed video of assailants pelting soldiers with stones and chunks of concrete as gunshots are heard in the background. Muslim Brotherhood spokesmen called the shootings a massacre while an army statement insisted a terrorist attack had taken place. Edward Uranian for VOA News, Cairo. The United States says it has no immediate plans to alter its financial aid program to Egypt. White House spokesman Jay Carney says U.S. officials are reviewing their legal obligations and will be consulting with Congress about how to proceed with a $1.5 billion aid package in the wake of Mr. Morsi's ouster last week. A leaked Pakistani government report says collective failure by that country's military and civilian leaders allowed al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden to live there undetected for nine years. The report was published Monday on the website of Qatar-based broadcaster Al Jazeera. It was written by a commission formed by the government to investigate the circumstances surrounding the covert U.S. raid that killed bin Laden in May 2011. The death toll in Quebec, Canada's oil train disaster jumped to 13, and police say about 37 more people remain missing. The rail company that operated the train said it was parked outside the town of Lac Megantic late Friday, and that the train's engineer said its brakes as he ended his work shift. But sometime later, the train started moving downhill. It gathered speed and derailed on a curve, causing huge explosions. The blast destroyed about 30 buildings. U.S. investigators say they have found part of the tail section of the Asiana Airlines plane that crashed Saturday at San Francisco Airport. Transportation Safety Board Chairwoman Deborah Hersman says the section was located in San Francisco Bay. She says the plane's flight data recorder shows the aircraft was flying at a speed well below what it should have been traveling when it crashed. The airline says the pilot of the plane was still in training to fly a Boeing 777 and was trying to land that type of aircraft at the San Francisco airport site for the first time. Two Chinese schoolgirls were killed. About 180 of the more than 300 people on board were injured. A plane carrying Zemaya's president was forced to make an emergency landing Monday in Mogadishu. An engine problem is to blame, as we hear from VOA's Gabe Joslow. President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed and his delegation were heading to South Sudan to attend that country's Independence Day celebrations planned for Tuesday. 
A Somali government spokesman says the plane had been in the air for about 20 minutes when one of the pilots reported a problem with one of the aircraft's two engines. The plane landed safely back at the Mogadishu airport and no one was reported injured. Officials say the president took another plane to South Sudan. Gabe Joslo, VOA News, Nairobi. Greece's international creditors have agreed to hand it another $8.7 billion in bailout funds. Athens had sought release of more than $10 billion of its second rescue package to avoid defaulting on debts in the coming weeks. But Eurozone finance ministers meeting in Brussels chose a smaller package, saying it would be parceled out over the next three months. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. More at voanews.com.